Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of Close Look. Kevin Atwal here. I'm at the University of the Fraser Valley uh, with a few members of the CIVL radio team, along with Aaron Levy, who's the manager. How are you doing this Sunday afternoon? I'm great, how are you? Yeah, pretty well, thanks. So tell us a little bit about the history of CIVL and what you guys do here. Well, okay, uh, in 2003, the Student Union Society at the University of the Fraser Valley uh, put together a campus radio committee. And this is something we teach all volunteers here at Civil Radio in the first general orientation session. I show them a picture up here on the wall of Doug McLean, who was the university's, uh, the Student Union Society's vice president of finance, and he chaired the committee of uh, campus radio from the Student Union Society. And eventually, through months and years, it took uh, two years before eventually they lobbied the students to ask for a student fee of $3. Uh, before that, they had referendum, uh, put forward a referendum where they non-bindingly asked if they would be willing to give those $3, uh, where they said, yes, we would in the future be willing to give $3 per semester to the station. And then uh, through... Uh, literally years of planning weekly meetings involving the community, lobbying uh, the city and neighboring cities and the CRTC. Uh, it took all this work to develop programming as well to physically from the ground up spend their own money, build this station on desks, turntables, clocks, sound padding for the room, computers, uh, boards, uh, everything basically you would need. They, they spent their money on it. They got the money back from the students eventually in 2005 once they built the infrastructure and uh, once they had uh, incorporated as a nonprofit society under the BC Societies Act. And at that point, uh, they began trying to get a tower. They began trying to actually start broadcasting on FM radio. And that didn't happen in 2008 when they initially tried. They had a programming coordinator, they had a station manager, they had staff and an infrastructure here and studios ready to broadcast, uh, but they were not able to secure a tower, um, although they were able to uh, secure frequencies. Uh, the tower itself for broadcast was not available, and they started broadcasting on the internet. And we now have logs on our website, on civl.ca, of all the hours of broadcasting since 2008 that CIVL programmers engaged in on the internet, which is really important in the end um, because they had so much practice when we were ready to go up on FM in September of 2010, which is when that finally happened. And there were many people who helped along the way in terms of uh, community members as well as students. Uh, I mentioned Doug McLean, who was the original president of the society. He, along with uh, some of the original programming staff, people like Swinder Singh, and uh, Eric Plyman and uh, Jordan Turner, Sarah Church. These were the original student and community staff and volunteers of the station who put together the infrastructure and the, and the programming. And it, it, it's now ballooned into being almost 150 volunteers. Uh, we've been broadcasting on FM since September of 2010. And we're just excited to, to be getting out in the community. We won our Cultural Diversity Award in February where we met you and the Close Look team, uh, where you were also honored. And it yeah. was a pleasure to be there with you and to, to both be recognized for the work we do. Uh, we won just recently in the past month uh, the Community Development Award at the National Community Radio Association Conference in Halifax at CKDU 88.1 FM in Nova Scotia. And uh, we're looking forward to a new school year with lots of different challenges and opportunities. We're going to be fundraising in the fall, our first ever fund fundraising drive after eight years now uh, since since the, the station has been gestating and, and developing. you got to remember people were broadcasting for two and a half years on the internet before they got up yeah, on FM and were able to get out into the community. Is that the uh, tower that I see right there? Was that the one that was put up, put up on top of B building? So yeah, this tower... This tower was put up with CBC's help in the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. Actually, we swapped frequencies uh, earlier in 2010 so that we broadcast now on 101.7 FM. Originally, we had a license for 88.5 FM. Uh, through, over the course of uh, sourcing that out and trying to get up on 88.5, we realized we're going to have to move move frequencies or change our operations. So we switched with the CBC frequencies, and as a result, we're going to actually co-locate with them, share a tower uh, towards Langley. 
uh, near, near Aldergrove uh, on the west side of Abbotsford. And in the meantime, until we share that permanent tower, this is a, a temporary tower that we placed on the top of B building uh, with the help of University of the Fraser Valley's facilities and maintenance and, and all their uh, administrative capacities. They've, they've allowed us to use, use the roof here for this tower. And this is a photo when we, the week we went up on FM radio on, in September of 2010. Here's Larry Portalance, our former promotions coordinator. And that's you right there. Uh, yeah, this is me looking, looking like I look. <laughs> and here, here is our tower blown up. It, it, it almost looks like, uh, like a, a windmill. It, it does, it does. And this is this is so this is what we've uh, been loaned from the CBC, and this is where we're broadcasting from right now. And and soon enough, uh, we won't be any longer. We'll be on a permanent tower on BC Hydroland. Very cool. I mean, that's super nice. The CBC, I guess you know, a tower is better than no tower at all. Tell us a little bit about uh, the various segments that you have on CL CIVL Radio, different shows segments. Well, here we're here on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, right now, the hip hop highlight is playing, yeah. and that is Isaiah Finn who is the son of Rasta Ruben Kubena, who hosts, he does CIVL broadcasts, 24 hours of this man's programming with, between Ruben, his sons Isaiah and Jay, 24 hours a week with our rebroadcasts are made up of uh, reggae and dance hall and hip hop from Ruben and his family. And they've been great volunteers for the past three years. How long have you been volunteering here, Ruben? March 2008, you know, we got your Pretty much when they were just ready to go online. People listen to the station all across the world. Uh, do you also have information on who the target audience is and the demographic? Or do you guys even have one? We have ways of tracking, you know, some of it, right? But the main way we really know is people actually respond a lot. Some people write messages, some people write letters, and some people talk to us while we're doing the programming, right? Like, for example, today, there was a family from Italy, you know what I mean? And she's been tuning in a lot over the last couple of weeks. And she was like, oh, my mom is here with me today. And, you know, send a shout out to my mom. Like when we're doing the radio, yeah. sometimes people are talking to us and we're sending out shout outs too. Same thing has been happening with Jamaica. So there's a lot of people in Jamaica that's been tuning in. You know what I mean? So Yeah, man, I know exactly what you mean. It really shows that... <laughs> The power of the internet yeah. is very powerful, not to be underestimated. Now we got the best of both worlds because we have the internet, which takes it worldwide, and we have the tower, which brings in the local energy. You can jam to it in your car and all of that, right? Yeah. You know, so it's really good what's been happening. I think so too, and the energy is great here. I just walked into your guys' office, and there's like posters on the wall, and it's colorful, it's vibrant, it's exciting. Is there like a message that you want to provide to like the youth out there that listen in? A lot of people feel like they can get involved in an important way, uh, but a lot of people that stops them from taking the first step. So, you know, I'd like to think that uh, there's nothing that you that you if you'd like to accomplish it through civil radio i'd like i and we would like to help you do it and that, that's what our mandate is to to support you specifically the university of the fraser valley um and students here and because students here they're learning they're developing skills and experience to be able to take into the job world and and make a life for themselves make a career for themselves we'd like to help you do that in one way shape or form our mandate is to serve and be accessible to as many different groups of people as possible. So we never want to turn somebody away. A volunteer, a listener, if somebody is interested in a type of music uh, that we don't play, and I welcome them to come program it. It, it, it. If it's not to do with music programming, it could be to do with promotions. If it, it could be to do with, uh, with, with writing and yeah, and community development. A lot. We, we have a lot of people who are interested in international development, who are interested in uh, social work, who are interested 
and things that you wouldn't necessarily s suggest were media related issues. And we I wanted to say that Civil Radio really has provided a voice, I believe, for like what he was saying, stuff that was not getting the voice. Like for example, the reggae music, there's a lot of university or community stations that have reggae, but this is one of the best in terms of the time. It's not just a few cheesy hours, it's like basically the reggae and the hip hop and the dancehall and the jazz and blues gets a solid on the weekend it's, it's very lively in that sense so I think he has done a great job of giving giving room to, to music that did not have as much airplay so it makes the station have more power because if it was just playing the same thing as you're saying it's almost like you're encroaching on maybe the rock territory or whatever but by opening it up to the reggae and the Punjabi we got excellent Punjabi programs here too right. it really makes it like a cultural hub Absolutely. and a kind of new millennium energy reaching out to the the growing multiculturally yeah. vibe of, of Abbotsford and BC and Canada in general Absolutely. that's fantastic hi we're from Mexico and you're watching Klaus Luke. Uh, Aaron, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became involved with radio. I was a student at the University of Guelph in 2004, and I think my first weekend at university, I moved to Guelph from Toronto where I lived, and I'd been I'd written for the student newspaper at York University and volunteered at CHRY in Toronto, one of the first and biggest uh, and most respected campus community radio stations there. And then when I got to Guelph, I said, I want to get involved with radio there. Yep. And uh, I, my first weekend at school, before I'd started classes, I was volunteering for their campus community station. Can you think of a specific uh, volunteer that came in here or a guest that you guys had on the show whose, live you, whose life you really touched and, and, and changed? Someone very memorable that sticks out in your head, that kind of keeps you wanting to go forward with CIVL and community radio in general. Chuck Anger, who we'll meet at the Abbotsford Flea Market later today, we've 100% changed his life. He's This is a 50-something-year-old guy, late 50s, absolutely obsessed with blues music and with the history of blues and the, the social justice uh, implications of how the blues came about. And he did not have an email address. He had never looked at a computer before he volunteered at Civil Radio in September. And now he hosts his own show every Wednesday morning between 8 and 10 a.m. And he is getting involved in booking bands, which we'll see at the market later with Harma White. And uh, he pre-records his own show. Uh, he's got 10, 10 shows in the can, and if anything, if he needs to take some time off. And this is a guy whose life has absolutely been transformed. Fantastic. I'm excited to meet him. So for our uh, viewers out there who are, you know, aspiring broadcasters or just wanting to be better, very successful individuals in life, what could you say to them to let them know that they can reach their full potential and reach their dreams? Uh, contact info at civl.ca for one, but yeah, you can't do, you can't you can't reach your dreams if you never try, right? And that's a cliche in itself, but, but sometimes it's those simple things people just keep thinking about them. But if they don't act on them, they're never going to get there. It's just going to be thoughts in their head. So cliches are okay. Yeah, there's a lot of really inspiring people here who they have these ideas and they 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 don't know what to do with them. You just need to encourage them to to get out in the community and do their thing. Look at close look. Look at civl. Look at the Valley Voice. I mean, you know, there's just all, all sorts of different things and people who, who make differences and, and you can't do it if you don't get out there and, and, and try to make it happen. I, I tried to volunteer at a campus radio station and have a radio show and seven years later this is my career. So There you go. Hard work does pay off guys. And Ruben, yourself, a positive message out there for the youth? Well, the positive message is to say that music brings people together. You know, I really believe that the best example I could use is that big thing that happened in Vancouver with the Stanley Cup, right? It was a great occasion. The people were so happy, you know, about the, the hockey and all of that. But Bob Marley has a cliche too that he says, one good thing about the music, when it hits you feel no pain. So music is different from sports. There's no physical pain involved, it's just music, right? And I think where the city missed out on that whole celebration why it went bad, if they never had music involved. I think when you have a hundred thousand people in the streets, they should have had a big concert set up, you know? Because music heals the soul. So I believe that music brings people together irregardless of religion and irregardless of race, you know, and irregardless of political background. Music is like, it's the happy center rallying point of our humanity, you know? and. The messages that comes from music is greater than 
the message from the preacher or even the prime minister. The messages are wonderful and poetic and just uplifting. So it's been eye opener for me too to be involved with the station and you know I come from the reggae music background but the station is so varied so we get to be you know introduced to Punjabi and other people and all kind of nice vibe and it's a good thing that building here in terms of the multicultural diversity even to meet you guys too you know that was a good vibe to meet you guys and see what you were doing and I like what Aaron talk about the idea of having a vision and instead of just leaving it as a vision and working on it and making it come alive and you can see that sometimes it takes time because it started in 203 and it takes little different you know climbing and climbing right so the whole thing is to stick to the foundation stick to the vision and keep climbing higher and higher persistence is key very well said music heals the soul